The Intracoastal Waterway flowing along the pier here at Waterfront Park is a 3,000-mile engineering wonder. It begins at the Anasquan River in Massachusetts and runs southward along the Atlantic seaboard and around the southern tip of Florida, then follows the Gulf Coast of Brownsville, Texas. The Intracoastal Waterway, or ICW, provides leisure and commercial boaters alike with a protected alternative to the open sea. As early as the 1770s, Florida residents dreamed of interconnecting the numerous creeks, rivers, lakes, and sounds that existed along the east shore of our state. In 1881, that dream was realized when a private company, the Florida Coastline Canal and Transportation Company, undertook the necessary dredging to make these interconnections possible. As an incentive, the state granted 3,840 acres of land for every mile of canal constructed and gave the company the right to collect tolls on the waterways. The state had millions of acres of public land, which they frequently deeded to rail, navigation, and other companies to spur development. The result was a 5 foot deep by 50 foot wide toll canal crisscrossed with numerous tall chains that could be lowered to allow for passage, after a vessel paid its toll, of course. In 1890, the 18 mile portion of the canal connecting the Matanzas River to the north and the Halifax River to the south was completed. Henry Flagler, the namesake for Flagler County, was a major investor in this canal. Ironically, it was the success of Flagler's railroad that led to the eventual bankruptcy of the Florida Coastline Canal and Transportation Company. In 1927, the Florida legislature created the Florida Inland Navigation District, known as FIND, to raise funds to purchase the defunct canal company. Once Florida acquired the canal, it turned the property over to the federal government, which still owns the entire intracoastal waterway. In the 1930s, the Army Corps of Engineers expanded the canal to 8 foot deep and 100 foot wide. They also straightened out portions of the waterway, taking out some of the more dangerous twists and turns. The narrow waterway south of the Palm Coast Marina, east of Marker 1, is all that's left of the original waterway. World War II brought enemy ships off the coast of Flagler County and with it a renewed interest in the Intracoastal Waterway. Over the first seven months of 1942, the Germans sank more than 35 ships off the coast of Florida. Between 1943 and 1955, the channel was again widened and deepened, this time to 12 foot deep by 125 foot wide. Interestingly, the portion of the ICW in Flagler County was the single most difficult area to dredge. Large amounts of natural occurring coquina rock had to be blasted away. 18-mile segment was completed in 1951. Today, the federal government provides only a small portion of the funding necessary to maintain the Intracoastal Waterway. The Florida Inland Navigation District provides the funds for the continued maintenance of Florida's portion of the ICW. Additionally, they provide millions of additional dollars in matching grants to local governments that promote access to public waterways. The City of Palm Coast has been a recipient of fine grants for numerous projects, including the construction of Waterfront Park. As you walk along its shores, consider the Intracoastal Waterway and the immense work it's taken to make it a dream come true.